Well, this is going to be some easy listening. Hey everybody, my name is Old School Nerd. Welcome in. Uh, today is going to be Sabaton Day. They're releasing a song called Soldier of Heaven, uh, which is um, dedicated to all of the heroes that never came home. Unsung heroes, um, unknown heroes. And what I mean by that is um, a lot of times, um, nowadays, when, when in combat, everything is monitored and a lot of times there's cameras involved, documentation. Uh, lots of information being passed. So a lot of times the things that occur in battle are well documented for for uh, Prosperity and also for the records of the people the further in time you go back um, The less you have of that for instance um, My dad was in Vietnam and he was on a riverboat crew uh, He was a, a chief petty officer and then he became an ensign. He was the captain slash commander of a navy gunboat and he would bring special ops uh members different places and um he knew many seals and he knew many special forces operatives especially in the ones that he would go and rescue when they would go rescue down pilots if they were dropped in these larp people would go behind lines and rescue down pilots in vietnam those guys sometimes couldn't get out the same way they got in and they had to hoof it out or walk out, make it to the nearest river that was accessible by the riverboat, uh, the, the River Tyne um, boat operations uh, squads. And my dad has brought in quite a few pilots and special operations uh, behind the lines operatives who rescue down pilots. And he told me a few of those stories. Um, but as we go further back in time, Korea and uh, World War II, World War I, and even before that, a lot of instances of how soldiers die, what they did before they died, a lot of the stories aren't told. And we hear stories of even in Vietnam and even now, uh, loved ones getting told, um, your soldier is dead, come to find out they haven't died. Um, or um, something happened, your soldier is fine, come to find out your soldier had, had died. Um, that's why we have in the United States the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier at Arlington National Cemetery. I've been there. If you ever visit the United States and go to D.C., you should definitely check it out. Um, there are remains of multiple soldiers whose remains were so um, unrecognizable they were never identified as to which, who the soldier was. Um, and there are monuments to these unsung, unknown heroes all over the world. If you have a country uh, of any semblance of modern government, you usually have um, an honor monument to those who died, and especially to those who died who never came home and their whereabouts are unknown, whether they be POWs, MIAs, um, lost in combat, presumed dead, there's always that thought. So Sabaton came up with this, um, with this video called Soldier of Heaven. I'm going to watch this. Um, I'm going to soak it all in and then at the end of this video i want to dedicate this video to someone and i'm going to tell you his story after this video my name is old school and check, check us out on oldschoolnerd.com it's got all the social media posts the patreon link for those who want to support the channel and the merchandise store let's get into this sabaton from nuclear blast here we go Very 80s epic movie sound, isn't it? I won't be coming home. I won't be going anywhere. I will call this post forever. Here on the Alpine slope, where I did my final stand, I shall remain among the ice and snow that brings me to this mountain. A force of nature too strong sends from above. Where spirits lead the way, the wings will never fade. Why Friday, I'll take the 
Pretty awesome. <laughs> I saw the end of war. I watched the soldiers come and go, and I kept my watch forever. So many brave men fell in the battles that were raging. Good hook. You can almost imagine that when they play this live during this this tour to end all tours that they're doing this year, hopefully it still continues. I know things are a little bit up in the air right now, but um, you can just imagine when they sing this chorus, everyone's going to be, I'll be immortal. That's going to be a kind of like Ghost Division or you know, it's going to be, that's going to be that call out to the crowd. You know, they're going to sing that out. Uh, this shows that it's um, mountain area, but it also shows that it's World War I theater because of the biplanes. Interesting story. Um, we hear about, you know, all these different stories of heroes and stuff, but I think this is also one of those things where there are times in war, all the way to the very, very, very long ago past, uh, when there was no mechanized anything, when it was just foot soldiers and cavalry, um, there were times when there were volunteers. And they were asked to do a mission where they're like, hey, you don't come back. It's kind of like Mission Impossible. Like, something happens to you. Mm, no. Um, you were never there and nobody will never know what happened to you. That actually does happen. And there are men and women now who accept the responsibility that if they die on certain missions, no one will ever know what they did. There are people in all countries around the world. Russia, Germany, Sweden. France, the UK, the United States, Canada, Australia, all around the world, where men and women volunteer for, for particular duty, knowing that their actions will never be known, no medals will show up on their chest, there won't be any parades for them, they do it because it's their duty, and if they should die doing it, nobody will know what they did, because some of the stuff they do is for the betterment of humankind, a lot of that involves anti-terrorism activities across the globe. All these countries do it to prevent terrorism from different um, bad actors around the world. Um, and they know that when they sign on, this is a possibility. That's on my mind right now because, again, I'm going to tell you a story at the end of this, and uh, it'll be interesting. Um, let's finish this out. It's so good, though. It is, it is an epic song.
Wow. Wow. Dedicated to all those unknown heroes who never came home. Well, I'm going to tell you the story of one who did come home. Um, back in 1968, there was a, uh, a man who was an enlisted NCO in the United States Army. He served in the Army Rangers, and then he went and was attached to a special forces outfit um, in Vietnam. And he volunteered for LARP work. Now, what LARP work was, not, not what you think of live action role play. It wasn't that. Um, these guys were legit. Um, Laos Aviation Pilot Search and Rescue. And essentially what would happen was, if you look at a map of Vietnam, there is a country just to the west of it called Laos. And the United States was not allowed to do any military operations in Laos. However, there were many times when pilots would um, fly missions, get shot down, and by the time their parachute lands, they're in Laos because they would drift to the west. And the volunteers who went to try to rescue those pilots, they couldn't take a helicopter into Laos. You weren't allowed. It was against the rules of, of warfare. It was, it was, Laos wasn't allowing it. And, just you couldn't do it. Couldn't cross into Laos for that. So special forces operatives and Navy SEAL operatives, um, both SEAL Team 2 and SEAL Team 1, and also the special forces um, pilot rescue services and Air Force personnel as well, which is now known as the Parajumpers. But um, these special operatives would either by boat or sometimes literally just inserted close to the border and they would walk into the border with radio transmitters that would track in on the radios, uh, the radio rescue beacons of the downed pilots. They would find the pilots and get them out behind enemy lines. They weren't allowed to be there knowing that any medals that they earned, any actions that they did would get put in there on their in their folder but it would be in a secret page like a back page there would be um silver stars bronze stars distinguished service medals achievement medals for all these actions but they would never be able to wear those medals on their uniform they would be on a portion of their 201 file that it showed it in their record but they could never say they did it because of where they had to go to save life. There was a man who was an NCO in the um, Special Forces in the Army in Vietnam, and he volunteered for many of those missions. And he earned multiple Bronze Stars. Every time he would go on one of those missions, he earned a Bronze Star. It's just what it was above and beyond the call of duty. On one of the missions, he took a round in the back of his leg. I don't know if it was right leg or left leg. I don't remember which one he told me. But he told me his story. He was in a field hospital in the Mekong Delta, close to Van Lok, and uh, Tra uh, Tran Nok, Tran Nok, which is a, a cross. It's one of the places where the Mekong River splits into the Delta. He was in a field hospital, recuperating. They pulled the bullet out of his leg or whatever. He's recuperating. And then the Tet Offensive started. For those who don't know what the Tet Offensive is, it's um, the Viet Cong, uh, supplied and enforced by the North Vietnamese Army, in force, attacked multiple targets during the Tet Holiday of 1968. My father was there at the time, and he remembers what had happened during this time. And this soldier was in the hospital. There were two MPs, two MPs at the door of this field hospital 
that was a converted French hotel. They had sandbag bunkers on either side, and they had uh, machine guns and um, positioned at either door, either side, with sandbag built up on either side of the entrance into this hospital. And when the when the Viet Cong attacked, the guards engaged. The guard, one of the guards, one of the MPs was shot, and he was killed. The other one was trying to hold off. This soldier climbed out of his bunk, hobbled his way to the front door, and realized what was about to happen. When he got to the door, one of the Viet Cong members had charged the guard station just outside the door where the soldier was still there firing. And it became all too clear to him the Viet Cong were using sappers. What a sapper is, is essentially a suicide bomber or a combat engineer who would run in close. You hear about the stories of the soldier that runs up to the bunker, sneaks up to the bunker, pulls the cord on the satchel charge, throws it through the hole, and it blows up. That's a sapper. The difference is the Viet Cong were doing it in more of a suicidal way. The sapper blew himself up and killed the other guard, putting fragments in this soldier's arm. He picked up a weapon, started firing. The sappers were coming across the courtyard from other alleyways in this village. And he just kept shooting. Other patients tried to come and help him. Most of them were non-ambulatory. Another, another um, soldier had gotten out of bed um, with an arm injury, came and was helping him find ammo so he could keep shooting because his arm was injured, his shooting arm, and he didn't have a weapon. So he was just trying to find ammunition to give to the soldier to keep firing from the door to protect the field hospital. And at one time, he ran out of ammunition picked up a cane knife and then defended the door with a cane knife. If you don't know what a cane knife is, a common word for it would be a machete, but this was a Vietnamese cane knife. So it had a hook and a very large body. Those of us in South Louisiana, we know what a cane knife is. He fought hand to hand to keep the sappers out of the hospital because he knew that if they went into the hospital, they would detonate themselves and kill all the soldiers inside. This soldier killed four more Viet Cong hand to hand with a field, a cane knife until reinforcements came in jeeps and stopped the attack. Because at the time, the attacks were going on everywhere. It was the Tet Offensive. Everyone was being attacked. It wasn't like there was a bunch of people going, oh, let's go help them. No, they were busy too. For his actions, this army sergeant, who was a staff sergeant at the time, earned a silver star. Later, when he came home, in 1992, when I was 17, I was in a program that taught young men how to survive, how to do wilderness survival, how to do different um, first aid skills, and he was leading a program where he taught men and young boys how to do search and rescue. And he was my instructor. I met up with him the other day, and when Sabaton, when I saw that Sabaton was going to make this song about the unknown heroes, both the ones who come home and the ones who never make it home, that we never hear about because of the stuff they do that we don't get to know about because of what they're doing is classified. I thought about Shane Bernard. Shane is now in his elder years. He's still alive. I ran into him the other day and we had an appetizer at Walk-On's Bar and Grill. But when I saw this, I remember he told me that of the eight men that he went 
to Vietnam on his tour of the eight men who volunteered for, that, for the program to rescue pilots in Laos. Only him and one other soldier came home. The other six never came out of Laos, which means their bodies never came home. They left their dog tags at the base, so whatever happened to them is unknown. That's what they're talking about. To all those who serve, now and in the past, Thank you for your service. And I don't care what flag you served under. Wars are decided by politicians. Brave men and women are the ones who are their fate to fight in them with valor and honor. And I don't care which country you served in. I saw in the chat when this live premiere was going on, you saw there was a bunch of people from Russia and they were talking trash. He has the people from Germany talking trash. It's just national pride, man. You'd swear it was a World Cup match, but it wasn't. But no matter which flag your loved one or your, uh, your loved one serves in even now, they serve with a purpose, they serve with an honor, and we honor them. And for all those who didn't come home, no, we may not know what you did, but luckily for us, Sabaton, Sabaton, make sure that we don't forget. Damn it, I was, I was this close to not crying, and I fail. <laughs> Damn it. Thank you, Sabaton, for that amazing song, for the amazing message, and it's a perfect way to start this year. Hey, listen, right now, pre-order the new album, The War to End All Wars. I've already ordered mine. I've ordered three. <laughs> Keeping one, giving away two. We'll see you guys later. This is a really good one. Thank you, Shane Bernard, for your service. For your gallantry, for your honor, for your bravery, going above and beyond to protect those who could not fight for themselves. We're glad you made it home. And I hope this video honors your fellow soldiers who didn't come back. And we'll never know all the things they did that should be honored. Hope this helps a little bit. We'll see you guys later.